Welcome back. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In this video, I'm going to talk about general optics and image formation for physical science. So to start off, optics is the idea that we're going to be talking about where images form, where like mirrors or lenses are going to produce an image. It'd be all about like how the Hubble telescope works, how just a typical telescope works, how a microscope works, how your camera can magnify and reduce the image size too. So that'd be probably more pertinent to you is how cameras work actually. But anyway, so some, some words to be aware of to start. Real images and virtual images are different in that a real image, the light actually comes from the same point. It's actually light is at the location. Like I'm a real image because when the light bounces off me, it goes all out, it all came from this original source. A virtual image, light doesn't actually come to a point. Our brain makes it up and thinks, it basically does a bunch of math and says, based off these angles, we think it's hitting here. So an example of a virtual image is actually a flat plane mirror. When you look at a mirror, a flat mirror, like in your bathroom, you get a virtual image of yourself because there's actually no light coming from back there. So you're in, you're in front of the mirror, there's a mirror, and then you see you behind the mirror. There's no actually light coming from there. So that's a virtual image. No light's actually there. When you look at me in real life, when we're not quarantined, when you look at me in real life, there's actually an object here. There's light hitting me and coming from me out to see you. So I'm a real image. But the image in the mirror for a flat mirror is not real because the light's actually not coming from there. So some other things about like a flat plane mirror should be aware of too is that not only is it virtual, but it's also flipped left and right. Again, this is the idea that when you wave your hand at the mirror, when you wave your right hand, the person, the virtual image you in there raises their left hand and they wave their left hand back at your right hand. This is also kind of neat too, because this is why people sometimes think they look weird in a real picture. So you take a picture, you see yourself and like, oh, I look weird. You, you feel look weird because when you look in a mirror, you see your flipped image. But when you get the actual picture taken of yourself, that's the real you. That's what other people see. So whatever way you think you part your hair from the mirror, it's actually reversed. So flat mirror, uh, plain mirrors also do not magnify images. So however big you are, that's how big the image is. All right, it's not gonna change. All right, uh, my wife disagrees. <laughs> another story, uh, another time. So sh she shouldn't watch this. All right, anyway, uh, for a flat plain mirror too, the image will be the same distance away. So wherever you stand, there your virtual image stands as well. So if you're two meters behind, then it'll also be two meters uh, behind their, your virtual image will be two meters behind. So also too, something you should be aware of is that it's not the glass that produces the image. There's a misconception that your mirror is just some glass and that you see an image from the glass. That's not correct. All right. Necessarily. There is a little bit of reflection from the glass, uh, but most of your reflection comes from metal. So it's like there's silver on the backside of the mirror. Uh, that is the mirror of the glass. So there's a layer of glass. Behind that glass, we have a layer of a metal. That metal is what does the reflecting. There is like a little ghost image, meaning like there's the glass does reflect a little bit of light and it will not be at the exact same location. But again, we don't really see that too often. So we should also mention too that uh, like uh, how do one-way mirrors work? Again, Generally, one-way mirrors, one-way one -way windows, like an interrogation room, really just comes down to just brightness, all right? If it's really bright on one side and really dark on the other side, glass ends up just becoming a one-way, you can see one way in, one way out. Just like at nighttime, if it's dark outside and your house is lit up, people can see you, but you can't see them, all right? So that's pretty much how it usually works. On an interrogation room, it's like really bright and then there's like glass, there's just a window right there and they keep it really dark out there and really bright inside and the people on the outside can see in, but the people on the inside can't see out. All right, for lenses, so these are not flat plane mirrors now, these are lenses now. We're gonna talk about just convex and concave lenses. The lenses work by uh, refracting light. What that means is the light's gonna come into it and it's gonna bend and it's gonna change the angle, all right? So a convex lens, when the light comes into a convex lens, the light's gonna be bent to focus. So a convex light will converge light and focus at light, focus light. Whereas a concave lens, when the light comes in, it's gonna spread it out. So uh, again, connecting this back to real images and virtual images, a convex lens has the potential to make a real image because it can make all the light come to a point. If all the light comes to a point, then it'll agree where it's at actually, and that's a real image. 
since a concave lens is going to be spreading the light out, this light on the backside will never come together. Therefore, it always produces a virtual image. So for a concave lens, always virtual. Convex lens, it might. We'll talk about that later. There's a little uh, chart that'll help you know what it's supposed to do. For mirrors, they work similar to the lenses, except that they reflect light. And we should mention that a concave mirror behaves like a convex lens. That's because if you think about, so a convex lens, it's gonna focus the light. A concave mirror, like a bowl shape, when the light comes in, it's gonna also bounce to focus as well. So when the light comes in here, it's gonna bounce and focus to the center here. Whereas a convex mirror, when the light hits us here, it's gonna bounce out in all directions. So a convex mirror behaves like a concave lens. So the convex mirror produces virtual images, concave mirrors will produce some real images, depending on where you're located at. It's also to know that uh, we can make bigger lenses than we, or sorry, we can make bigger uh, mirrors and lenses because a mirror can be supported on the backside. Lenses, you have to like hold on just the top and the bottom, and so you can't provide a support in the middle, so you're limited in size when you talk about big things. Like the Hubble telescope uses mirrors uh, primarily to catch the light rather than actually lenses. All right, and I guess I should mention you, I found already mentioned, the typical metal we use for mirrors is silver. Silver reflects approximately 99% of visible light. Aluminum is like around 92%. So for most of you guys, you probably have silver mirrors, but if you have like a really cheap mirror, it might be aluminum on the backside. So, all right, we'll talk more about image formation, like where they form here in two seconds. All uh, right, another part, place, uh, important place to know is the focal point. The focal point just refers to where does the light focus if you have a convex uh, lens or a concave mirror. So the focal point up here would be like, hey, where does this light focus actually? So now the actual lens has a focal point and where it focuses might not be, it won't be the same place, but the focal uh, point is if it's really far away, where that light will focus. So it only focuses there when it's like infinitely far away. So, and uh, as it gets for, uh, closer to it, then it doesn't focus at the focal point. And this kind of depends on the curvature. How curved is this? Where does it focus? All right, so um, I have a, another video that goes over like a simulator. I'll put a link to that one as well uh, for you guys to take a look at. But here I'm just gonna quickly talk about where does the image form for a convex lens, all right? When the object's really far away, what will happen is the light comes into the convex lens and it focuses really close to the focal point. As the object gets closer, it takes longer for the light to be focused by the lens until so the image pushes back away from the focal point. It also changes size too. So eventually you get so close that you get a virtual image. So when you're really far away, the object that's coming in there makes a really tiny image inside there. You can think of this like uh, with your eyeball too. Like your eyeball is a convex lens on the front. That convex lens, the goal is to basically focus the light to a point on the back of your eye. More on that later. As the objects get closer, it's harder to focus the light. It gets pushed further back. Now again, with us, we can actually change the size of our eyeball. So our eye actually changes the lens, like how bulge it is. For a camera, the way they work is they actually do change where the lens and the screen are located. So when you hear your camera out of focusing, it's basically moving uh, the lens relative to the screen to change how what, what distance it has between those things. So as the object gets closer, the lens and the screen have to get farther apart. And as the object gets far away, then the lens and the screen get closer together where the image is being captured. All right, so <clears throat> with that said, uh, this will be the most helpful chart for you to actually figure out what type of image is formed, all right? So this is gonna be true for a convex lens and a concave mirror. So if the object is really far away, really far away from the lens, that means it's gonna produce a real image. It's gonna be reduced means small. Inverted means upside down. The object's gonna flip upside down, okay? So what that means is when the light comes in here, it's gonna flip and change the side. So this is an inverted image here. When the objects are really far away, you get an inverted image. It's also small in size when you're far away. Once you get to this place called 2F, or sometimes called C, the center of curvature, this is gonna be uh, the place where you stop being magnified, or stop being reduced in size. So if you put an object right at 2F, twice the focal point, then there's no magnification. If you get closer than 2F, if the object gets really close, then it's gonna be real magnified and inverted. 
Now, again, for us with our eyeballs, you know, our focal point is pretty, pretty close. Like we're talking like a couple centimeters because your eyeball is not that big. And so your eyeball has to focus it within a few centimeters. So your focal point for your eyeball is really, really tiny, like a couple centimeters. So for us, pretty much everything we see in real life is way out here. All right. So then there's another special thing to be aware of, and that is the focal point. When you put something at the focal point, nothing is seen actually, because when the light comes up to this lens, it actually comes out parallel and you never see it. So there's no image form there. But once you get too close, then you get a virtual image. So a virtual magnified upright. So a lot of your questions ask about like what type of images can form. So you need to be aware of about two places, center curvature, which is 2F, and the focal point. Over here, if you're really far away, you get a real reduced inverted image. If you're between F and 2F, you still are real and you're still upside down, but you'll be magnified, you get big. If you're at the focal point, no image is formed. And if you get too close, it's virtual magnified upright. For a better description of this, again, take a look at the other video I'm gonna put a link to, which will be about, uh, I actually go through a simulator and move things around. So, but here's again the general idea. Where does the image form? You put something like for wave letter A. If this is the object, where will A form? Since it's really far away, A is gonna form around the focal point and it's upside down. So if we put B at 2F, where does B form? At 2F as well. That's where it's gonna form. It's gonna form at the same place. So what happens as the object gets closer, the image gets pushed further back because it's harder for the lens to bring it together. All right, as it gets closer, your, the lens needs more distance to focus the light. So if you put something like C is between B, uh, C is between 2F and F here, so where does C form? These aren't formed farther back. For D, I have no, no image over here. Why? Because D is at the focal point. That's actually a blind spot. Nothing forms there, actually. All right. So a little more about the physics of eyesight for us. So again, the way it works for our eyeballs is something different gives off light or just bounces the light off like, oh, there's something on the table. What's going on is that light comes to that object, goes through our eyeball, through the convex lens, and the job of the lens is to focus the light to the same place. If all the light comes to the same place, it's in focus. If it doesn't all come to the same place, it's out of focus and it'd be blurry. So what does our eyeball do? When things are really far away, our eyeball flattens out the lens because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not really hard to focus the light because it's coming in already pretty much parallel. When things are closer though, so if the object's close, these light rays that are coming off this are more diverged, they're more, they're more angled. So again, up here, the angle that this is coming in is not too steep but here it's a much steeper angle. So what does our eyeball do? It basically adjusts how curved it is. So it'll bulge out when things get close. When, when somebody gets real closer to you, what happens is your lens gets thicker to focus the light. And when, when something moves away from you, your lens flattens. As you get older, your lens gets less, like I should say, less flexible and it gets more fixed in place. And so it's harder and harder for your lens to bulge out and get thick like little babies, like their lens should be able to bulge pretty far and so they can focus pretty close in front of themselves. But as you get older, your lens loses its flexibility and so you pretty much get more and more farsighted um, in general. Not always, but typically you'll get more farsighted as you get older because your lens can't bulge like it used to to focus the light. So that's why people that are older tend to have reading glasses because the lens just loses the ability to flex to get big, all right? So you can help yourself out by just doing eye exercises Look near, look far. If you change the depth that you're looking at, then your lens has to constantly has to change size. And so this is sometimes why they talk about it's bad to uh, stare at a screen too long because you're not really changing your your lens gets stuck in place, and so your lens loses some flexibility. So anyway, um, another thing you should be aware about for our eyes too, uh, besides just the focusing, is um, we have our pupil, which is basically what lets light in. When it's really dark out, our pupil dilates and gets a little more light in, and what gets real bright, it constricts so that there's less light into it. All right, that's just basically changing the amount of light entering into it. So other things about uh, images for like our eyeballs, some people are nearsighted, some people are farsighted. What does that mean? If you're nearsighted, you can see nearby objects. If you're farsighted, you can see things that are far away. So why? It comes down to how strong your lens is. So here we have an example of a hyperopic eye. This is a person that would be, um, what are they gonna be? They are, they are farsighted. What does that mean? They can't see things. Their lens has a hard time focusing light fast enough, all right? If you are farsighted when the light comes in, 
the light can't, the lens is too weak. The lens can't focus light fast enough to bring it to the back of the eyeball to where it's gonna be in focus. So how do we fix that? We give you a convex lens. The convex lens pretty much helps start bringing the light in. And so if you're farsighted, you get a lens to help you out. Your glasses have a convex lens, which starts focusing light for your eyeball, all right? If you're nearsighted, your lens is really powerful. Your lens pretty much is able to just, when light comes in, it just focuses it really fast and it focuses too soon. It actually focuses before the end of the eyeball. And so it helps out. What we do is we put a concave lens there. And what that does is it makes the light spread out to push it back. So if you're farsighted, your lens is too weak. We give you a convex lens to help it focus. If you're nearsighted, we give you a concave lens, which spreads the light out and then it pushes back where it actually focuses at. Here's just some other images of that too. Again, a myopic guy, your lens is really strong. The light focuses if you don't have any accommodation. But when it's close by, it can do it just fine. So again, you're nearsighted because when something's close, your lens is powerful, it just pulls it together. So, but for something far away, we need to actually spread the light out so it looks like it's near. All right, so if you're nearsighted, you pretty much have a convex, uh, concave lens, which makes everything look like it's close by, which then makes everything focus for you. If you're farsighted, again, if something's really close, it doesn't focus fast enough. And so we give you a convex lens to start bringing it in. The convex lens helps us start helping your lens bring it into focus. All right. So if you're going for the B, you can be done now. If you're going for the A, I got a couple sample questions with a couple formulas to be aware of as well. So we've been talking about some generalities. So up here, this is just a general chart to know where you're gonna form, how big you are and relative locations, okay? These two things, these, this is probably the most important thing you can take away for some of your homework assignments. So for people that are going towards the A, there's a couple things, there's some equations actually you need to be aware of. All right, those two equations here, we have a magnification, a magnification equation and a focal point equation, like where the distance of the object and imaging can form. And so the first one here is the magnification equation. This is basically a ratio of where's the object located, the image and the object. So D naught, the D, DO, that's where the distance of the object is. DI is where the image forms. And so if the distance of the image is the same as the distance of the object, your magnification is one, so there's no change in size. But if your object is twice as close as the image, then your magnification is, um, let's see, D naught, if that was 20 and that was 10, that'd be one half. You would be magnified to get smaller, okay? There's another equation here is one over the focal point equals one to the, over the distance of the object over one to the distance of the image. So here we see what those variables stand for. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick sample question so you can see these two things in action here. So, at what distance behind the lens will an image form for a convex lens if the lens has a focal point of 10 and the object located four centimeters away? So before we even uh, do the math, we should think about where we, what we expect here. So back to that previous thing we were looking at, we have a 40 and a 10 here, where are you at? Too far. Okay, our focal point is 10. We're told that the object is 40 centimeters away. That puts us over here, okay? Because this is 10, this is 20, so our object's over here. We expect to have an object that's real reduced inverted, and we expect this object to be relatively close to the focal point. Because if you're really far away, you're gonna be close to the focal point. So let's go back down now. So our equation is this, this actually helps us find it. One over the focal point equals one over the distance of the object plus one over the distance to the image. Our focal point was 10 and our distance to the object is 40 centimeters. That's how far in front of the lens it was. We're gonna solve for DI. So I just turned it to have a, the common denominator. So at 4 40ths is 1 tenth. 4 40ths minus 1 40th, we got 3 40ths over equals one over DI. Flip it around, DI is 13.33 centimeters. That's where the objects, or where the image would form from the object. So it's relatively close to the focal point. The focal point was 10 centimeters. It's focusing at 13 centimeters. All right, next one. I have the same setup, but now we just wanna know how big the image is, okay? So we have the same focal point, the same uh, object distance away. And so we're gonna use the same information we just had. We know the image is gonna form here. We want to know what the height is now. 
So for the finding the height, we use the next equation. The magnification really is just a, a, a ratio of the distance to the image, distance to the object. So my image formed at 13, oops, sorry for that. My image formed at 13.33 uh, centimeters. The object is located at 40. My magnification is one third. All right, so I'm gonna take that one third and multiply it by the original height because this M is a, is a multiplier. So if M is one, there's no change. If M is one third, then we're gonna take the original height and multiply by one third and get the new height. So 6.6 .6 would be the image height. So it's smaller. Again, we already knew this would be smaller because we're really far away. So we should get tinier. All right, God's peace.